Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm really really sorry it's been such a long time but thank you guys for coming back. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome, my name's Becky. So yes it has been a little while, I'm really 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 sorry. Um, a lot of things have been going on actually. Um, so as you've probably seen from the title of this video, um, I ended up having a blood transfusion. So it all happened rather quickly to be honest. So if you're new to the channel, um, guys, I have work called uterine fibroids, which are growths that sort of grow in your uterus, um, sorry, in your womb um, and all the areas, your, your lady parts. Um, they're non-cancerous growths, um, but they can cause a lot of issues. Um, with my fibroids, which are quite large, um, I get very, very, very heavy periods. Um, because of this, um, I do bleed very heavily. I lose a lot of blood each month. I was anemic um, and obviously quite a bit of discomfort and pain. Um, it all started a couple of months ago, almost. Um, I came on my period as normal. I was expecting sort of like 10 days or so of bleeding. Usually sort of five days of that is like really heavy and then it would sort of calm down a little bit. On this occasion, <laughs> um, it didn't. So I started off period heavy as normal, carried on as normal. Um, within about a week, a week and a half, it was still really, really heavy. Um, and I'm really, really sorry guys to be so graphic, but actually it was, there were clots, it was it was a heavy period. And I'm sure all of you out there that have suffered uh, and have similar issues um, sort of know exactly what I mean. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was really, really, very really heavy and it just kept going and going and I was getting weaker. I was starting to feel very dizzy, very out of breath, very faint, very tired um, and just very uncomfortable as well. Um, sort of my stomach, um, my abdomen area was very swollen. Um, almost like when you're about to come on your period, you know, when you sort of feel that very sort of just very heavy, heavy feeling. Um, so that's what I felt like. It was a week and a half, it was still continuing. I got to a point where I felt very weak. Um, I was in bed and that's not like me. Usually I just try and carry on as normal. So I was in bed. Um, I ended up having the paramedics come out to see me as, as just nothing was getting better. I called 111, which in the UK is um, sort of a health advice service. It's before you would call sort of the emergency services, you would call 111 to get advice. I said my symptoms, um, how much blood I've been losing, and they were very concerned for me. So they decided as it was weekend to call out the paramedics just to come over and check me over. They did, they suggested I carried on with norethisterone, I think I spelled, um, pronounced that correctly, which is what I think I've discussed with you guys on this channel before, which is a tablet that um, stops your period. So I had some of it prescribed, um, I carried on with it, but by this time I was just so weak that just walking up stairs just tired me out, um, very out of breath. It was very hot weather as well, so it was really difficult to tell what was just symptoms from the heat and also um, what was actually because I'd lost so much blood. A few days passed, still stayed in bed, felt very weak, um, really tired, kept bleeding, kept bleeding and bleeding. Um, by sort of a few days later, um, the tablets that had been prescribed by the on-call doctor on the weekend were starting to come out run to the end. Um, so yeah, the norethisterone. So I called uh, my GP, so my doctor. Um, he seemed very concerned. By this time I've been bleeding for over two weeks, um, extremely heavy. Even though I was on the norethisterone, I was still bleeding. He decided that he, I needed a blood test. I needed to come into the surgery and have my bloods taken because it was obviously sounding like I'd lost a lot and they needed to know what my levels were. So he, it was sort of, I don't know, mid-morning um, and he there were no nurse appointments left, so he said, I'll do it myself. Please come into the surgery within sort of the next half an hour. I will do the bloods myself. So I made, um, my husband drove me there, um, made my way. Um, he took the bloods, but he could just see from what I looked like, how pale I looked, how unwell I looked, how just, just my general look. <laughs> he knew there was something drastically wrong. Um, 
he said unfortunately it'd be a day or two before we get the results back from the blood test so you just I'm afraid just have to relax rest um, and by this time I tried to go back to work working from home but I tried to go back to work which was ridiculous I could barely concentrate I was exhausted um, even though I was just sitting there it was just I was still bleeding it was just exhausting and I had my attention was just not on work so I came back um, sat at my computer and tried to work felt um, awful I mean I felt so weak shaky dizzy tired faint hot all of those things I had fans on me because I'm thinking it's because of the heat all of that side of things and then about um, half an hour an hour later I had a phone call from the GP and he decided from he had spoken to the um, consultant at the hospital the gynecologist consultant and from just how I looked when I came to see him he decided that I needed to go to A&E so the emergency department at the hospital to have my bloods redone and they could get the results back quicker and then take any medical attempt um, do any sort of med you know if they needed to do anything they could do it there and then so he says don't don't rush down there have some lunch pack a bag overnight bag just in case you're admitted um, and get somebody to make to take you down there so I called Andy back who my husband who'd already gone off to work and said would you be able to take me there after I've eaten my lunch he said of course so he came down um, took me to the hospital I literally went in waited a very short period of time saw the triage had my blood done and within sort of half an hour or so I was admitted into the A&E department and they were doing a blood transfusion my levels my haemoglobin was so low I think it was down to 44 it was dangerously low and so they needed to get as much blood into me as soon as possible so it happened so quickly it just happened so so quickly so that afternoon evening I had three bags of blood transfused into me uh, which took quite a few hours um, obviously by now it was sort of um, evening time and so I was admitted onto a ward overnight where they would then check my bloods again during the night and then see if I needed any further um, blood the next day oh it all happened so quickly <laughs> so um i stayed overnight and the tech checked my blood during the night um by the morning they said you needed another bag of blood your levels still aren't at the level that we would need before you could be discharged from hospital so i laid there for another two hours um having another bag um, of blood transfused into my body by this time i had four four bags um, they needed to get it to a safe level before I could be discharged. So I had four bags. I had an um, ultrasound just to check the um, state of the fibroids, how big they were. Um, and then for any future uh, consultations with my consultant, um, that they would do a follow up check a few weeks after I was discharged from hospital. Um, so that's exactly what happened. I was discharged from hospital later that day told to carry on with the norethisterone um, and ferrous sulfate iron tablets um, until the, um, I saw my consultant. So this was about, I would say about five weeks ago, five, six weeks ago maybe. Um, and I carried on with the tablets um, and then I didn't bleed. I spotted every day. So I still, there is some, a little bit of blood every day, but they are very, very, um, what's the word? Um, happy with the my haemoglobin level now. So I went from being admitted to hospital with 44, which is dangerously low. Ladies never never get to that stage, and I've been told that by my doctors and consultants many times since. Do not leave it that long. <laughs> Do not leave it that long. If you feel unwell, if you've lost a lot of blood, you make your way to the hospital because you need to get it sorted as soon as possible don't leave it till it's at dangerous levels so i went from 44 it needed to be at least 70 before i was discharged i think it was 70 something when i was discharged from hospital um, my bloods were retaken a couple of weeks later um, and it gone up to 101 so an amazing improvement but still classed as anemic um, and then i was tested again last week um, or this week sorry this week and it's now at 124 which is absolutely brilliant. It's actually a normal range. It's probably the first time in years it's been in normal range. So that's absolutely brilliant. There are, however, um, updates from then. Um, I've seen my consultant this week. 
Um, I've had lots of symptoms and issues since I was admitted to hospital, but I want to go through that in another video for you. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to give you too much gore or too many issues all in one video um, but I feel so much better in terms that obviously my blood dev my, my haemoglobin is at a normal level now feeling a lot better in that sense having some other issues but I won't bore you with them today so ladies if you are ever in that sort of situation please seek medical medical advice as soon as possible because it's dangerous if, if you're losing that much blood and you're feeling that poorly you need to get help you need to get help but I think we're all such warriors we just want to carry on it's only our period you know just oh we can deal with this we deal with it every month you know what's the difference this month I'll be fine I just need a bit of rest I need to just recuperate a little bit and then I'll be absolutely fine no if, if you're losing that much blood if you're feeling that unwell you need help your blood your levels are going to be so low you're going to and it's, it gets dangerous so please 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 seek medical advice um, I would never want to go through that again and I would never wish that on anybody that have to go through the blood transfusion um, although actually absolutely amazing I'm so grateful and thank you for all those people that donate you know that donate blood um, because it was there when I needed it and it's there when other people need it too um, so ladies don't leave it don't leave it if you feel unwell seek medical advice as soon as possible and make sure that you keep up with your you know your iron levels are high and all of that <laughs> but that's it it's just a quick video today guys I just wanted to update you and I just wanted to thank you for sticking around and waiting for so long for this video because it's it's been a long long time since my last video um, but I'm doing better um, but there'll be some future videos to give you some updates as to what's happened since my blood transfusion um, what happened with my consultant the other day and possible treatments going forward but it was lovely to see you guys today take care of yourselves seek medical advice if you ever need it if you're ever unsure on feeling unwell seek it as soon as you possibly can we can be warriors we are absolutely we're such strong women but there's sometimes where you just need to give in and say i need help <laughs> So yeah, lovely to see you guys. Take care. I'll see you again very, very soon. I won't leave it that long, um, as long next time. Okay. Um, so take care. See you soon. Love you all. Bye.